Ricks. 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 Do you have any ham sandwiches, Ricks? Ricks. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars podcast. This week we will be continuing our series Bad Batch Breakdown, and we're going to continue by breaking down the fifth episode, Rampage. How are you doing today, Matt? I am fantastic, Melissa. How are you doing today? I'm amazing. I love your hat. It's very Thank fun. you. It's a throwback hat. If you guys, uh, any people who are wondering, it's my brother's old hat company. Uh, called Peck Design Co. These are cool. They don't make them anymore. So it's kind of an exclusive hat I'm wearing here. I do look like <laughs> crap today, though. I got back from a run. I haven't had time to shower yet. So excuse my ugly appearance. But you look wonderful, as always. Oh, thank you. That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. No, it's not. I've said way nicer <laughs> things to you than that. You're, uh, not, you're not blending in with your background, though, which is an upgrade from the last episode. True. I, I mean, my shirt's still kind of blends in with the wall. There'll be some changes with my background. I'm going to try to figure out a better way to, you know, I'm going to throw some more of my Star Wars stuff in the background for future episodes. So this is mostly uh, Star Trek, but I don't know if you notice this, this is an art paste piece that's been in my apartment for a while. It's one of my favorites. Do you see what it is? It's, it's stay on target. Correct. Stay on target. Hope. It's kind of a, like, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you wouldn't really know what it is. And even if you are a Star Wars fan, you you might not know what it is, yeah, you know, because it's kind of subtle, but I like it. And we're going to get more Star Wars stuff like your background. Anyways, I sidetracked just... already, tangent already. <laughs> Let's That's... jump into the episode. How about... Why don't you, can we start with a synopsis? Oh, yeah. I, do you want to dive in and do? No, you, a... you, you do the synopsis because I did. Oh, I get to I do can't. the synopsis. OK, so in this episode, where to even start? We open up with the ship again for like the fifth straight time in a row. It's an opening shot of the ship <laughs> and the Bad Batch are on the ship and they finally decide to take care of uh, keeping track of Omega, thank God. Well, you're you're giving too much information for a synopsis. A synopsis would be for the, the big picture of what the plot is, which would be the Bad Batch gets hired um, after trying to find out where Fennec is coming from and why she's after Omega. The Bad Batch are hired to complete a job to get more information. That's See, a- and this is why Matt does the synopsis. Yes. Because Melissa gets caught in the details. So now that we have <laughs> that out of the way, yeah. um, what were your initial thoughts? Um, I thought it was good. So obviously another filler episode. I think we kind of predicted that last week. Yeah. I said, uh, I think next week's going to be a filler episode too, which is fine. Spoiler alert, by the way, for everyone going ahead, we spoil things. I know some shows don't do spoilers. We spoil because we're talking about the episode and you should have watched <laughs> the episode by now. Okay. Uh, so I liked it. I thought it was cool. I mean, obviously very fatherly type of episode here looking after, uh, I love Omega. um, but I think it was cool. They, they go, um, uh, what's that, that, uh, what's, what planet are they on? They meet Sid, this chick, cool new character. I, 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 you know what? I don't know the name of the planet. I thought it okay. was, it, it was not Zygeria, was it? That's not I Zygeria. I don't, know. I don't think it really matters, but yeah, she was, she's in a bar. I think that's cool. Um, she's a cool feisty little character who I think will definitely come into play later, obviously as hinted in the end mm-hmm. of the episode, you have the rancor that comes in this episode. Nice little throwback to empire or return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have like a mini rancor there. That's kind of cool. You have these, uh, Russian mobsters, <laughs> whatever these guys are Russian mobster cat people, Russian mobster cat people. The bad hey, it's, right. it's a throwback to season five of clone wars with the slaver arc. If you remember, right. Right, 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 right. Yep, I do remember that. So, um, I, actually, I thought it was good. I think overall it's cool. And then they have, there's a cool Easter egg, obviously, kind of towards the end. We have Bib Fortuna come in. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, the, and, the Gam- and the Gamorrean guards. <laughs> and so the Gamorrean I think it's cool. guards. I mean, it's, it's a cool, cool episode overall, filler episode. But um, I thought they'd give us more information on, like, why Fennec was after... Omega I think that's kind of, I don't know I don't know why they mm-hmm. kind of held back on that but um overall good episode entertaining episode a little bit longer than last week but um some cool stuff in this one what about you I really liked it I had a good time with it I think actually when you think about it what this show is doing right now is exactly what Mandalorian was doing in season one so, I thought the yeah. same thing yeah 
So they're slowly building the world and it's not giving you like a ton of information with what's actually happening in on the timeline, but it's introducing those really small elements that are going to come into play in later episodes. Yeah. I think one of the biggest talking points right now for us is Wrecker's headache. Yeah. Yeah. They, they kind of threw that out in the open this episode. Uh, so now it's obvious, like something's going to happen with him. I think we're going to have to deal with some moment of record turning or something happening where mm -hmm. I think that's, I think you're right. I think you're on the right path. Our theory is Rex is going to come in and have to save them, mm -hmm. him, turn them how to, you know, show them how to get rid of the chip or whatever. I think that might be next episode. I because do Because they really hinted at that strongly here. Also on the note of the Mandalorian thing that you mentioned, this is, I mean, it's, it's essentially the same plot. You know, you have a kid, you have baby Yoda, you have a kid, right? You have the unlikely father figure looking after this found child. Yeah. And, uh, she, you know, what's her name? Omega's like walking out. She wants to go on the journey with them. They give her a yeah. com link and they're like, stay with the ship. That happened in Mandalorian too. He tells yeah. baby Yoda, go stay with the ship. And he doesn't because he's a little stinker, but um, it's the same same beats here, same mm -hmm. type of same type of vibe. So I think you're totally right. And it is building the world a little bit, but I think next episode will probably have some really big stuff in it. Um, I but think I think this one was good. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about Sid, that character Sid. Yeah. Do you know, this blew my mind, dude. Do you know who she was played by? Um, her voice sounded familiar. I'm sure I would, I'm sure she's been in, she sounds like she's been in like Family Guy and American Dad and like, the Simpsons before or something like it sounds like she's a pretty big voice actress but I don't know who, who um is. try cheers oh cheers yep 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 it's Carla it's it's uh Rhea Perlman right yep now nah, that makes sense Dude, see I would have never guessed the name but you you say cheers and I'm like oh I know who you're talking about now. yeah I could not figure it out the entire episode I was watching it, I was like oh my god there's something about the way that this woman is speaking that is so familiar to me and so I went back and I looked at the credits right before we started recording and I was like oh my god it's Carla from cheers I should have known that wow I, I wouldn't have guessed that so you I guess yeah that's actually so crazy. That, it makes sense. You know, it's so, so frustrating when you hear some of these voice actors though and you're like who is it and I don't want to look it up I don't want to cheat I'm like I gotta remember but I never do no but I, I thought she was a really really cool character I thought the design was awesome the the lighting the character design in this episode was just top tier so good like they've really figured out a ton since the first season of Clone Wars but it's interesting because Sid is obviously like the character is an informant as we find out for the Jedi. So the Jedi have died and now the Bad Batch are kind of coming to her to look for work. And by the end of the episode, we're kind of shown that Sid's like, oh, if you need money, you can come work for me. But I also know who you are and I know that you're worth a lot of money yeah. to the Empire. So I could also turn you in. So yeah, but we know she's not going to. I think that's kind of like a cheeky stab at them just being like, look, I know, sh I know, I know stuff. And yeah. I'm, I'm a valuable friend to have, but I'm also a formidable enemy. Do you think uh, with that comment that she has at the end of the episode where she's kind of, you know, being cheeky, do you think that's kind of hinting at the Bad Batch's future of becoming like regular mercenaries or bounty hunters in a sense? You know, yeah. working these kind of jobs, do you think that's hinting towards- Yeah, that's interesting you go? bring that up. I think, yeah, probably. I mean, it makes sense. Obviously, that's what they're cut out for. They just pulled a pretty big- job and they don't really have much else function mm -hmm. in the world other than that and they really hinted at that with you know they get all these credits she's like there's more where that came from blah 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 she has connections obviously with job of the hut so yeah. makes sense but that's also why i'm surprised she didn't know who hired fennec it's like yeah you have connections with jabba and you don't know i hmm. it was interesting that she she brings up the bounty hunters guild from mandalorian right she brings up the guild hundred percent. So now we have the link that connects these two shows, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool because they're so spaced out. Mm -hmm. So I think the, all these similarities that you and I are talking about with that, that's totally on purpose. It rhymes. It's, uh, <laughs> it rhymes. It does. <laughs> and uh, obviously they, she brings up Fennec and like, oh, she's the new hot stuff to the guild, but she's already proved herself, you know? Yeah. So now we're kind of getting a backstory on Fennec, which is pretty cool. Also CGI Bib Fortuna, pretty cool. Yeah, that was um, awesome. He actually, so Matthew Wood plays Bib Fortuna in The Phantom Menace and he plays him in 
Mandalorian. And it was really weird when I was looking at the model of that character. I'm like, I can totally see Matthew Wood's face in this animated model. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah, they do a great job. And that's why it's, it's an impressive show is they really do put a lot of time and effort into making these characters look like in real life. If, if they yeah. are on screen, like Fennec mm-hmm. looks like so they, they, they look so much alike. And the Bib Fortuna thing, I mean, it's it's cool. But also, I think it's interesting going back to the Mandalorian. Obviously, last episode of Mandalorian, last scene, he gets pow, yeah. Shoot it by Boba, right? <laughs> Spoiler alert. If you haven't watched Mandalorian yet, I don't know why you're watching this show. Go watch that first. We're not, uh, we're not filtering anything on this we're show. We're not guys, filtering so. anything. We're talking through it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, all right, now we see like this is the earliest, more like the earliest version of Bib Fortuna we've seen. Oh, wait, he was in Phantom Menace. Yeah, he is. Why, when? In the in the race scene in the Phantom Menace at the oh, pod race, right. he comes over right, to Jabba right, and he's right. like whispering in his ear. And yeah, whatnot. that's true. So I guess that's the, that's the first that's the earliest version of of Big Fortuna we've seen. But I don't know. It's just kind of it's a cool Easter egg to have in there that and the the Rancor and the Gamorrean guards. I love it, and it really helps interconnect all the stories. It it gives a nod to Return of the Jedi. It gives a nod to the Mandalorian. So what your brain automatically does is it goes, oh, this is all the same story. It's just in different mediums, which I really appreciate that effort because I really feel like that's where the sequel trilogy missed out is they didn't acknowledge the prequels. They made some tie-ins with the originals, but they didn't feel like the same cohesive story. Yeah. And what Bad Batch is doing and what Mandalorian is doing is they're making all those tiny connections that shows you this is all interconnected. Yeah. And it makes your mind go, oh yeah, like it's different medium, but it's the same story. And so I really, yeah. really appreciate that just from a storytelling point of view. That means a lot. Yeah, I totally agree. Let's get back to the let's get back to the plot of things a little bit. I hope you don't mind, but back in the in the beginning, in the arcade or whatever that is, bar arcade, maybe a <laughs> yeah. mix of both. I don't really whatever. know. Omega immediately knows who Sid is. And you know, like she goes up, she's like, You're Sid, whatnot. Now a yeah. lot of people could just brush that off as a not very important line. She's a kid. She's probably not thinking about it as hard. I was like, is this for sensitivity? Could be. And she's like, you're very intuitive, kid. Or, I don't remember how she talks. She's not Roz from she's... Monsters, Inc. But, but she's not that's... a smoker. <laughs> she could be. Sid seems like a smoker. Hey, kid, you're very intuitive, kid. Uh, no, I think I agree with you. I think, yeah, maybe, maybe that's a good point to bring out. I didn't really think about that, but that's an interesting theory too. Like, I think they are kind of hinting at this thing. Like she goes up and knows immediately. So for sensitivity, real possibility here. I thought you brought up a really good point last episode because you said that you saw a lot of similarities between Anakin and the Phantom Menace and how Omega is now. Yeah, like they exactly. wouldn't have the awareness that they're force sensitive. They don't know what it is. That's just yeah. what they grew up with. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm, I'm kind of thinking the same thing is that Omega just goes up and she knows yeah. automatically. And I'm just yeah. like- who is this child who yeah. donated their DNA? <laughs> the, well, they better give some more information next episode. They really teased us too much. I think they should have given us something, but I, I guess it makes sense. Like yeah. we know Fenix hired or is part of the guild. So I guess, all right, but this one's off the books. It's a private commission, mm-hmm. right? So, and then let's get into the story a little bit first and then mm-hmm. let's get to questions. But in the episode, they go to this planet. They have these bird dragon things, very Avatar-esque. Oh, yeah, um, those were so animals. cool. Very cool, cool animation. And we find out that they're doing, they're trying to rescue this uh, adolescent from the slave trade. And we find out it's not a child at all. In fact, it's a baby Rancor. Uh, and the Bad Batch get caught. Uh, and Omega has to end up helping out. So mm-hmm. she almost gets caught as well. Let's the Rancor out. It wreaks havoc. Ends up fighting with Wrecker. Again, head stuff, yep. getting bonked. So this is all, I mean, he call, he says he has a headache at the beginning, then his head get, mm-hmm. gets bonked again, for like the 10th <laughs> time in the last four episodes. So yeah, I mean, that's undeniable. Something's going to happen. I, it's got to come to a crux next episode. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think if Rex is not in this next episode, it, the next episode almost seems where like the drama is going to start happening. And then either in that episode or their episode after you bring Rex in, because Rex is the only one with knowledge of how to do that. Yeah. Because he definitely talked to Ahsoka about that. They were together when that whole ordeal happened. So right. there's nobody mm-hmm. better to bring in than that character to help them out. So Great. it'll be, it'll be interesting. I do, I do want to talk about the, the animation team in just overall the overall design of this show and how it looks and how it feels 
there there was that moment when the Zygerian slave traders get on this ship and they're looking to see if there's anybody else on board and Omega's hiding from them. I can't explain this, but like the way that environment felt, like I felt like I was there. It was so interesting, like just like the yeah, feel of the um, environments, the design, the dust particles. It's it looks incredible, but yeah. it's crazy to me how you can feel what that would be like if you were actually there. Yeah, it's- the cinematography there is great, and it's always fascinated me how they do that. You know, like you create these environments, and then like you got to decide where the shots are going to be beforehand before you start animating. It's a rig process so the fact they're able to do that is great also sound design in this episode i was gonna say the same thing obviously rancor these cool dragon birds the speeders uh the ship as it's flying into the thing also their ship we haven't talked about this before bad batch's ship is so badass it's awesome it's like a mix of like a um you know a republic ship with like uh, but like also the imperial Mm. um one that the emperor travels through it's like it's just a cool and it also kind of looks like a one of those Thunderbird ships that the Klingons use from Star Trek, kind of a it does. vibe as well. It does. A bird of prey. Yeah, bird of prey. A bird Thunder- of prey. <laughs> whatever. It's Thunderbirds, whatever. Bird of prey. But yes, that's kind of what it looks like. It's a sick ship. And the sound design is awesome. And I'm a nerd about sound design. I love it. I think it's so interesting, like what goes into this, especially for shows like this. Is like you have to have so much creativity, but they nailed it mm-hmm. this episode. It definitely stuck out to me. Yeah, I I do the the artist, Keith Kellogg, I think is the He's the animation director and Joel Aaron is the lighting and cinematography director. So shout out to those guys because the work they do is just insane. It's just yeah. remarkable to me how I can feel what that would be like if I was actually there. 100%. So amazing yeah. work to you guys. That The show looks amazing. <laughs> it's incredible. Well, yeah, so well done. I'm trying to, I actually, do you, did you see my? Oh, wow, more, more notes. <laughs> You are thorough and I love that. I love doing this. I love it so much. I want to see what else I wrote down. Oh, I I literally just w- wrote one note down and that is just, I love the dad relationship that she has with each of them. It's really cute. The animation in this episode was so subtle. I don't know if you caught this, but when they're talking to Sid and Sid's like, oh, the kid's the only one who knows what's going on with you, like, like and it goes to a background shot and it's just Wrecker and Omega high-fiving. Did you see oh, that? Oh yeah. yeah. I thought that was so cute. And then like in the be- in like the beginning where they first walk into her office, uh, Omega reaches over to like pick something up like a classic kid does and Echo grabs her arm and he smiles, but he shakes his head. It's just, right. I love those little nuances that they throw in. They're so cute. Yeah. And I it totally just adds agree. to the weight of the show. It's just like, oh my God, these guys are hardened soldiers, but they just melt when they're interacting with her. That's so sweet. Yeah. It's like, I actually had that same thought when they're up on the mountain and she's like sitting there, they're looking down with their binoculars and, and you're like, oh, like these guys are what? Like they're supposed to be what? Like aged to be 30 years old is like their yeah. mental age, I guess. Like mm-hmm. obviously their physical age is less, but they're you know, mm. sped up to, to grow or whatever. But like, what, 30 years old and they have to deal with this, what, 10-year-old kid, something like that? Mm-hmm. It's the- like, it's a funny dynamic because it, it and that's how it is different from Mandalorian because Mandalorian's like a child. I mean, he's 50. Once again, we're, we're, we're doing weird ages here with Star Wars, but <laughs> he's like 50, but he's like a little baby child. And it's, that's different from like a 10-year-old who's like trying to get mischievous and she wants to be involved. She wants to adventure in the universe and all this stuff. So it is an interesting dynamic with these, you're right, hardened soldiers, but it is cool. And I, I agree with you. It's, it's, a, it's a good character development so far. It is. And the, the dialogue in the beginning where Hunter's like, what did we talk about? And she's like, don't wander off. Keep my eyes and ears on my surroundings. I'm like, this yeah. is literally what our dad did with us. Yeah. Always know yeah. where you are. Like yeah. be with people, stuff like that. I just, I love that. It's so relatable. I just love how they're throwing in those details and that kind of dialogue where you're just like, they are fathering her. And it's so cute. Yeah, I agree. I think it's great dynamic. Um, But going through and looking at my other notes, uh, the last thing I wrote down was Omega gets a new weapon. True, her little arm, arm bow thing, thing. It, it's kind of cool i kind of want one it annoyed me how she put it on her left hand though <laughs> like who shoots with her left hand i didn't know she was a lefty maybe she's not maybe she just doesn't know how to work the thing but that annoyed me uh but it is a cool weapon i mean i would love a little laser bow and arrow thing which is also looks very similar to uh oh god i always forget the name of the planet uh um, night sisters Dathomir. Yes. 
Dathomir, yes. The Dathomir guards have similar bows and arrows. Yeah, uh, that's what I thought it like was. Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, that's what I yeah, thought. Yeah, I think it was. it's a little different. I mean, it's the pink arrows are the same thing, like the pink laser arrows, whatever. Yeah. Are essentially the same thing. But um, yeah, Dathomir, same, same type of similar weapon. Yeah, I thought it, I definitely thought it was a Night Sister thing, but then I don't know. It'll be cool to see her actually get into action. I want to. I want to see a scene with Hunter teaching her how to use it or something. It's just like, give me more of the father daughter dynamic. I want that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean Rambo, right? Rambo, Rambo, and Rambo and his daughter. Do you <laughs> and know his, that? And his Kiwi daughter. <laughs> you know that movie uh, directed by Leonard Nimoy, uh, Three Men and a Baby. Mm, Do you know that I know movie? Of it. I've never seen it. Okay, so it Tom Selleck is in it. I don't remember the other two guys who were in it because I've only seen that movie once, but it's basically about these guys that are trying to raise this baby that was left with them from like one of their old ex-girlfriends, right? Mm. So they're raising this kid and the sequel to the movie is called Three Men and a Little Lady. But when I looked at uh, that poster, I couldn't stop laughing because I'm like, all I can see is like the Bad Batch. <laughs> oh yeah, it's essentially the same it, thing. It could just be five clones and a little lady. <laughs> That's what it is. There you go. You Photoshop that in. Five clones and a little lady. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> Every time I watch the show, I just go back to that mentally in my mind. <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it's, it's the same thing. It's like five adults who've never dealt with a kid before who are the same person, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, do, you have any, do you have any other thoughts? Before no, I'm just excited for the, I'm honestly just excited for the next episode. I thought this one was good um some cool like i said cool easter eggs you know we get jabba kind of into the mix now i always love when they throw jabba into episodes whether it's clone wars or the movies or mandalorian or whatever like you, you reference that kind of thing mm -hmm. love that because it brings me back to my nostalgic you know days of meeting jabba the hut for the first time in um return of the oh no new hope actually right i guess in the extended version whatever i'm rambling <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, I think it's a great episode. Looking forward to the next one. Let's let's get to questions. I'm anxious to see yeah. what people had to say. We have, I think we have like statements more than questions because I always uh, ask. I always I ask like, I like, mean, they they contribute to the conversation. I want to hear what they have to say. So let's see what you guys had to say this week. So, okay. So our first uh, question slash comment of the day is from our favorite person, Hidden Scribbles. HS, Hidden Scribbs. Hidden Scribbs. And Hidden Scribble says, I just want everyone to realize that Moochie is not Patiza and that there is no retcon involved. Is that Patiza, the Rancor from Return of the Jedi? Yeah. Is that what's, oh, is it yeah. Pat, Patiza? I didn't know that thing had a name. I didn't either. Wait, Rancor I'm going to look this up. Rancor name, yeah, look it up. Return of the Jedi. Wow, Hidden Scribbles, you, yeah, wow, that's correct. Patiza, yep. Male, the wow. Rancor in Return of the Jedi is named Patiza, who's actually male. Okay, fine, yeah. I mean- I guess that would have been maybe that would have been interesting if that was the rancor they had. But great oh, detail catch yeah, there. Yeah, that is uh, a really good detail scribbles. catch. Um, that's yet something I would not have picked up on. So no, it it, it kind of shows that Jabba's probably just been collecting rancors for years. They just keep dying. <laughs> they just get killed yeah. over and over and over again. That's a really good catch in scribbles. Nice work. Yeah, that's interesting. Fire Joe the Goat 230 says mm. that I think that Darth Vader will probably end up showing up in the show. I agree with you. And I've said this too. So I agree with you, Fire Goat Man. What's his <laughs> name? Fire Goat. Beetle. Fire, Fire, Fire Joe the Goat. Fire Joe the Goat. Uh, agree <laughs> with you. And I said this. If you've been listening to the episodes, I said Vader's going to show up at some point. He has to. I don't know why they wouldn't. It wouldn't make any sense not to. Um, I said the same thing about Luke in Mandalorian. Everyone said I was crazy. I was like, it's it, when with a second they're like, oh, there's going to be another Jedi. And I'm like, it's Luke. 100% it's Luke. It's going to be Luke. And guess what? I was right. It was Luke. Uh, <laughs> it's the only one that would like, that would have made sense as, and, and, and as, be as cool as it was. But look, Filoni knows what he's doing. He these, does. these, the people who have worked on the show know what they're doing. I think Vader will definitely show up. Uh, it's just a matter of in what capacity. I don't think it'll be big. I don't. It could be a whole episode, which would be sick, but it could also just be like Rogue One esque, where we see him in one scene talking to like a general or something. Yeah, you know, on uh, a hollow call or something. Yeah, yeah. E either way, I'd be happy with it. I don't care. I it, it, like it, it. It would help build the story and the character development more just to see a fresh new Vader. That'd be so cool. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I and think, we haven't I really think, gotten that. Yeah, ever. I think I think Fire Joe the Goat two thirty is correct. I think we're gonna see Vader at some point. It they're gonna have to be careful with how they use him, but I think it'll be a brief scene, but it'll be very impactful. Agreed. Or it could be at the very very end of the show. Yeah, but like I said, I'm excited for that. I uh, um like a uh, newly made Vader, like really cool idea here. We could really see some fury or something. Um, rage, some yeah. some Mustafar rage. <laughs> yeah, he's freshly burned. Oh God! Imagine, <laughs> imagine if it was like no, his he wouldn't have his castle on Mustafar yet. No, dang it! I got myself excited. Dang it! Never mind. Forget maybe there, maybe it's built. Maybe he just took over the Geonosians, um droid factory there, and just it's like his little Airbnb at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to pronounce any of these usernames. You guys are gonna have to forgive me, but Friska Dorka. Just put it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen. Okay. <laughs> but they ask, is it possible that Fennec is working for Boba? No. Is it? Mm. Because here's here's the thing. In Mandalorian, they gave us the impression that, or the, at least to me, I got I was under the impression that Boba and Fennec meet for the first time in Mandalorian. Yeah. But I don't know if they've had a prior meeting. Yeah, it's entirely now possible. I have to think about that. Boba is from Kamino. He is the only unaltered clone. No, this oh. is a very interesting theory. Whatever it is. your nickname is on, on oh. Instagram, what's your name? <laughs> we'll put it up here. It'll be yeah. up here. Um, that's a really interesting theory because, yeah, Boba actually has motivation. You know, I think about it. He's from Camino. His dad's Jango Fat. Maybe, uh -huh. maybe he had, maybe it's a relative of his or of somehow. <laughs> I mean, what would, you know, I should, I should uh, tweet at Daniel Logan and ask him what his theory is. The, the, he played kid Boba Fett in the prequels. I'm gonna yeah. tweet at him and be like, what do you think yeah. that this is? Yeah, I mean, that is interesting because maybe it's like a sister or something. Like maybe it's Django's clone daughter or something. Maybe they yeah. just, maybe it's Django as a woman and they just <laughs> modified the genes to make a woman clone. And then he forgot about her and when he got his head chopped off and maybe Boba's going back. So that is an interesting theory. Maybe Boba did hire Fennec. I think it's a little far-fetched because I did get the impression he was meeting Fennec for the first time, but also maybe now that I think about it, when he rescues Fennec after she gets shot in Mandalorian, he's rescuing her because he has a prior relationship with her. That is like, entirely possible, yeah. But they also kind of, that's also a gray area. Like we don't really know, like we know that Boba rescued Fennec, which by the way, that was also my theory from the beginning. The second I heard the footsteps, uh, in the first season of Mandalorian, I'm like, that's Boba Fett. Obviously, it's Boba Fett. Matt is on this show right now to let you all know that he had <laughs> these theories. Before I was they right. Happened. Well, I did. I I literally went and compared uh, the the boot clamping noises to where you when you hear him in uh, Empire Strikes Back when he walks in. Oh, you did to Vader's thing. Yes, and, but I guess we'll find out. Interesting I, theory. That's I did not even think of that. That's really yeah, I would have I would have never thought that. That's like that's an interesting pickup. That is a really, really some really good insights from you guys today. Yeah. The last one is from Abby underscore Fran underscore. And she says, I really loved the Zygerians they threw in there. Also, the bad batch basically being dads this entire episode. And then she has like the heart. Yeah, we talked about the dad thing, but yeah, the Zygerians are essentially the Russian mobster cat people. <laughs> That's what they sounded like, kind of, right? Except for there was one guy who's like, we're making our way back to the ship. <laughs> like when they, when they go like, the ship is clear. We are making our way back. I heard that guy. He sounded like, like a superhero whoa. or something. He's like, hey. <laughs> sounded gorgeous. Interested. I wonder if the Zygerians will come back up later. They I probably don't know. will. They have a yeah. great bone structure, great jaw lines. Uh, they look like, I mean, the main guy, the main Russian guy with his... his uh, wonky eye a <laughs> little cloudy eye why do bad guys in movies always walk with their hands behind their back too like he like walks know. out over the thing and looks at them and he goes and then he goes uh what does he say he says like four new slaves to add to my collection <laughs> he's not grievous ah a fine addition to my collection that, he says that he says he? yes he goes four new slaves or five or however many there are he's like four new slaves to add to my collection that's exactly what he says word for word wow okay <laughs> well and i stand corrected he picked up a few uh lines Grievousisms. from Grievous. so, <laughs> Grievousisms. 
Uh, but thank you very much, you guys, for the questions. Really love reading your theories. They are honestly, they've been so good. Yeah, great theories, guys. Keep them coming. I'm, this, these are really interesting to talk about. Like the Boba Fett thing. Great, great yeah. pickup there. You guys are quite smart. But that's why we do the show. I don't, I don't want to pretend to have all the answers here. We want to have conversations with y'all about this. So keep sending in questions, comments, whatever. Email us or um, DM us on Instagram. Or now... We have a Twitter, so we should probably announce that. Yes, we have a Twitter. I did not know if I was going to start one, but then after thinking about it for like a week, I was like, I don't know why I wouldn't start one. So I made us a Twitter. I think it's just star under, no, I think. Yeah, it's star I, underscore wars underscore pod, just like the um, right, Instagram. Right. I don't even remember what I did. It was that long ago. No. Uh, so you guys should follow us on Twitter. We're going to be posting there regularly with theories updates when our next episodes are going to be releasing and just kind of funny commentary on the episode so give us a follow there for sure um we are also on instagram star underscore wars underscore pod we're on youtube which is another star wars podcast with an underscore at the end and we are also on anchor breaker google podcasts radio public and spotify you guys should working on apple i think they're having um issues they've been having issues lately i got an email from them the other day so Apple will be up soon. I know a lot of people like to listen on Apple podcasts. Um, we are working on that. Yeah, so we're, we're, that will be up there. But in the meantime, it. also YouTube, watch us on YouTube. Um, subscribe, leave us a review or a comment, you know, follow us. Like it helps, uh, helps boost us up. And we want to hear what you guys have to say. If you like something, if you didn't like something, let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's, let's break in those crazy theories. This show's going to start picking up really fast. Hopefully we'll get into some of the record drama next week yes. and then we can finally hear Omega say, Ricks, 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 Ricks. Do you have any ham sandwiches, Ricks? Ricks. Uh, <laughs> I quite like some tea. Yeah. So thanks for tuning in guys. Uh, any last, any last uh, final comments? I'm really looking forward to where next week is going to go. And, and I am so hyped to see Captain Rex. Yeah, it'll be a great episode. So he better show up next episode. I don't know if you can do three filler episodes in a row, but also how many episodes are in the season? 20? 16. 16. All right. So we got time to do some stuff. They can do, there's so much stuff they can do. So yes, we're excited for this. Um, Please join us on this journey through Bad Batch and then through all other Star Wars shows that we're going to be watching as well and everything in between. Um, Everything in between. But But until then, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Um, Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, see you guys. We'll be right back.